On the phone, we have a former Texas A&M uh, football player. He also played for the Cardinals when they were in Chicago back in the late 50s and finished his career with the Dallas Cowboys, Bobby Joe Conrad. How you doing, Bobby Joe? I'm doing great. I see you went to A&M with John David Crow, but you guys weren't Junction Boys because you were a little too young for that? We were we were just young enough not to go. <laughs> we were on the we were on the curb watching them unload from the bus when they came back. We were freshmen. Okay. You did freshmen well, couldn't play then, so we we, we couldn't practice until uh, we had enrolled in school. And uh, so at the last minute, we decided they decided we weren't going with them, but originally they had planned to take us. Now, in high school, you were a quarterback, halfback, fullback, just about everything. How did they well, decide? I, I, I was not the 12th man. I was the 12th player. <laughs> <laughs> so when they, when they needed somebody, they just uh, called well, on you? I played all the backfield positions and and in. And, and uh, I guess I couldn't find a place to play, so they just moved me around. Well, you must have been pretty good because you were uh, an all state quarterback at, in Clifton, Texas, right? Yes, sir. Now, where exactly is Clifton? Clifton is about uh, 35 miles northwest of Waco. And everybody know, now knows about Friday Night Lights and how big high school football is in Texas. Uh, yes, back, back, back then in the early 50s, was it just as big? Well, we, we had one game. There's, there was uh, you know, 1,100 or 1,300, uh, 1,500 in the, in the town at that time. And we had about 3,000 at a ball game standing around. So how did you decide to go to A&M? Well... I was I was originally committed to go to TCU, and uh, Barry Bryant came to Clifton. We went to one of his uh, Aggie, an Aggie, ex-Aggie, not an ex-Aggie, but an Aggie, and his wife uh, had dinner for us, and the, the superintendent and the coach and everyone was there, and he was pretty impressive. And I knew it was a good school, so I didn't, I didn't worry about that. But uh, I, I ended up going to a because of his visit, I guess. How was it playing for him? <laughs> it was tough. He, well, we, they, they didn't pat you on the back then. Uh, you know, they did, they were really kicking the side of the head. And they couldn't do that now. <laughs> So you were teammates with uh, John David Crow. Did he yes, get all the girls, or did you get a, your fair share too down there? Oh, what did you say, again? You were teammates with John David Crow. With him being the running back, did he get all the girls? Well, I, I, there wasn't any girls down there. It was, it was all <laughs> male school at the time. <laughs> he was married when he came there, though. <laughs> he had his girl. <laughs> now... In the 1958 uh, college All Star game, you had you had a pretty good time there. You, you kicked four field goals, you intercepted a pass. The, the college All Stars upset the 1957 champion Detroit Lions. How was that experience? Oh, well, that was a great experience, David. Uh, actually, I was never a full time starter at AM and and to get to go to that game was something. And and then to get to play, and uh, you know, I, I I didn't expect to play. I expected to be a substitute. And uh, to get to play, and then have the night I had, it, it was it was just you know, unbelievable. Was your coach Otto Graham in that game? Uh, yes, sir. Sure was. What was Otto like? Well, he was a nice guy. He. he uh, uh, he had a good coaching staff with him, and uh, we, we just did what they told us, and it worked out pretty good. He, he knew what, what to do to win. I <sighs> had two horses, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Crow, well, Crow didn't get to play. He got sick up there. But uh, when you, you have 
Bobby Mitchell and, and Gary Walker from the Lions and, and the, the middle linebacker uh, Nitschke from the Green Bay Packers and Lou Michaels. You, you have some pretty good players. Well, in fact, there's about seven or eight of those people that uh, you know made made the All Star team a number of times. And uh, Chuck Alley was a substitute, and he was still playing for Dallas when I was in Dallas in 1969. And and John Henry Johnson was on the team also. John Henry, no, uh, yeah, no, he wasn't, was he? He was on the he was John on the Henry. Lions. He he was playing. I don't know whether he was already playing for Pittsburgh or not. He, he played the next year for Pittsburgh, though I know. How surprised were you to end up with the Chicago Cardinals alongside John David Crow? Well, I, I didn't expect it at all because I was drafted by the Giants. And uh, I, I don't know how the, it came about. Uh, I've always told everyone that if... if uh, I hadn't got traded to the uh, Cardinals. Pat Summerall would have been a, would have been a Falstaff Brewer <laughs> advertiser <laughs> because they traded me to the uh, Cardinals for Pat Summerall. And you would have played in the greatest game ever played against the Colts. Probably. You know, it's, it's, you, you never know what's going to happen. But anyway, I was glad to be going out with Crow. Uh, we're, we're we're very good friends. We talk a couple times a week still, and uh, he was the best man at my wedding. And and uh, you know, I, it was just a pleasure to play with him. We played for about eleven or twelve years together. Yeah. So, what were your first impressions of Chicago and uh, and the coach Popeye? And your park, you played at Comiskey Park back then. Oh, yes. Well, I, my impressions of Chicago were not very good because we lived on the south side. And uh, uh, it was a pretty rough neighborhood we, we, we lived in. And uh, the Cardinals were, you know, were the number two team there. There was no doubt about that. And uh, we, we played in Comiskey Park and all of bars on the windows down there around the stadium it kind of made you wonder if you wanted to even be in the neighborhood or not and uh so it, it's it was a real experience we stayed at the the white Sox moved out of the madison park hotel and we moved in usually when, when the season is starting your training camp wasn't too shabby though didn't you train at lake forest college we, tra- we trained at lake forest college every year i was with the cardinals and there was a little better area than where the Sox played. It, it was a good area, and it was it was a nice uh, surrounding, and they, they had the adequate facilities and everything. Of course, the Cardinals were just kind of like nomads. We didn't really have a home. We got uh, we played there uh, in Comiskey in '59, and then in 1960 we played in Soldier Field, and then then we moved to uh, St. Louis, and we played in the old Browns baseball stadium and then uh, next, finally when they built the first Bush baseball park where well, we moved into there and that's the first time we had a good stadium to play in. Yeah, I, I remember watching uh, the, the St. Louis Cardinals playing at, at the old Sportsman's Park. Uh, yeah. The, it, it was amazing that they could fit a football field in there. <laughs> yeah, we played one game. It was raining most of the first half, and they had a high school band march at halftime or something. And the second half, we were throwing white shoes off the field with mud on uh, because they were losing their shoes out there trying to march in that mud. It, 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 and, and people were set up there. They had season tickets that were behind the steel column and all this kind of stuff that, uh, you, you know, most people – didn't want to put up with for sure, but it, we got through it, and I'm still alive, so I'm thankful. <laughs> what was Pop Ivy like as a coach? Uh, Pop coaching in Canada, he didn't really. Uh, I don't know how to say it. He, he was he was a nice guy. He was a good coach, I guess. And, but but he was a Canadian coach, and, and you know Canadian football. He coached at Oklahoma, but. Uh, uh, we ran a double wing 
offense where we both have back set outside the tackle, you know, and then we started once one started in motion on every play. And it pretty well told everybody where you were going, which which side of the field you were running to. So uh it 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 was a and we didn't have the players. We we, we had a ragtag team when you get right down to it. The Cardinals had a pretty good team there in St. Louis finally, uh, you know, after uh, we retired and, and, and all of them, they got a, uh, some really good players. And uh, But Cardinals have always, I was so surprised they got to the Super Bowl here a few years ago. Yeah. Well, you guys had a, a pretty uh, good pair of receivers with you and and Sonny Randall. Well, we had some good individual players, but uh, and we had Larry Wilson playing that safety back there too. But uh, and Crows there with running back. Uh, we had some good players, but we just uh, you can't do it all on passing. And of course, nowadays they do, but back then you couldn't. Back then you had to run the ball as many times as you threw it. Did you like going? Did you like going over the middle in practice? I mean, with Larry Wilson playing safety. Oh, that wasn't bad. He's not gonna hurt you. He, he'll, uh, he'll, uh, yeah. He, he got most of his hard tackles from he, he blitzing. You know, the blitzing. Say, we had a safety blitz, and that was the first safety blitz actually, and uh, he made that a standard with a lot of teams now. Who, who did, which team did you enjoy going up against the most? Who did I enjoy playing against the most? Yes, sir. No, no. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I didn't really have a favorite team to play against. Uh, probably the hardest teams to play against were the Giants and the Redskins in that down. You had a ton of receptions for a receiver in the 60s, averaging like over 60 receptions a season for like four years in a row. What? Why was it? Was it the Cardinals just had a wide open offense compared to other teams in the NFL? Well, we threw the ball a lot because we were always behind. And uh, <laughs> that's the truth. And uh, we had a pretty good quarterback, Charlie Johnson, wasn't a bit- wasn't a shabby quarterback. He made, made the uh, Denver Broncos ring of honor or whatever it is uh, after he left the Cardinals. And uh, Randall was a speed demon, and all I did was just try to keep the ball in play. He also had another quarterback by the name of Jim Hurt. Pretty good career. Echeverry? Of the Cardinals quarterbacks, Jim Hart. Who oh, went yeah. Well, Jim didn't start playing until uh, my last year. He, he started playing my last year because Charlie got his. <laughs> Charlie was working on a doctor's degree in engineering while he was playing because if he graduated, he had to go in the service for six months. And uh, he got caught in service that last year, and that's how Jim Hart got to start playing was my little last year. And, of course, he would have played later, but it would have been a while before he got started. Charlie had been in, in, trying, trying to stay out of the service. What was it like going to Dallas for your final season? Well, I I was going home more or less, uh, I thought. Uh, just, I only lived a hundred and 40 miles from up there. So, uh, and my kids were old enough that they, uh, I wanted to, my girl was fixing to start uh, junior high sports, and I kind of wanted to be around and see them play. And uh, I had enough football. And Tom Landry was, you know, as good of a coach as you want to play for, a nice guy, and he treated you good. And uh, it, it was. But they were on the rise then, too. They just had their first winning season or so the year or so before I got there. And then the year after I was uh, retired, well, they went to the Super Bowl. So I didn't help them a bit. <laughs> but I enjoyed playing there because it was home and a lot of my relatives and all got to see me play before I finished up. Now, another of your quarterbacks with the Cardinals, 
was a guy by the name of Sam Etch, who was yeah, yeah. One, of, one of the great Indian fall quarterbacks. And somehow his skills never seemed to adjust to the NFL. But it, he was known as the rifle and had all sorts of passing records. But with the Cardinals, it, you know, it, it just didn't work out. What, any reason Sam, why? Sam was, was not a tall quarterback. I don't know. He was probably about 5'10", or five, I don't know whether he was that tall or not. But he, he could throw the ball. But he'd been playing Canadian football all that time uh, when he was the rival. And, you know, they get to start in motion and all, all sorts of things that are different or different from our football at that time. And uh, he just never did get adjusted completely. When you came in with... He couldn't do it. It wasn't that he couldn't do it. It was just that, you know, he hadn't made adjustments that he hadn't had to make in previous years. When you joined the Chicago Cardinals, I mean, they had a couple Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers on the roster in Ali Madsen and Dick Night Train Lane. What were those guys like? They were great guys. They, they were both nice guys. And, and uh, Jim Hill was playing on the opposite side from uh, Night Train at the time, and he was just as good as, as Night Train was when he got right down to it. Uh, they, they were great players. But Ollie, they traded before I got to training camp. To, to the uh, L.A. Rams, and I think we got eight or nine players in the trade. Yeah, that's that one. So I never got to play with Ollie. I don't think. Yeah, I did. I, I did, too, because I, I remember playing with, uh, you know, being on the team with him, but uh, he may have gone right after the first game or so or something, but uh, he didn't play the whole season, I don't think. You, you had... Uh, an extremely long uh, streak for games with the reception. We had 93 games in a row from 61 to 68. How disappointing was it to see that streak end? That's the reason I ended up in Dallas. <laughs> uh, that, that, we got to the 93, and uh, we had uh, we you back son-in-law as a head coach at the time, and uh, Charlie Winter. And uh, they threw the first pass of the ball game to me on a little slant that I should have caught, but he, he threw it where I couldn't even touch it. And after that, I didn't have but one more chance the whole ball game. So I was pretty upset. Well, you know, what do you mean when you lead the league when you, when you catch six or five or six passes of the ball game for a bunch of years, you expect at least to have two or three thrown to you that ball game. And he, he wasn't sorry about it or anything. He said, well, we couldn't do it to you because we were, you know, trying to stay in the ball game. Well, I, well, I wasn't going to take him out of the ball game. He just didn't throw it. And I told him that. So, I mean, as long as you're on the field, they might as well throw to you. Well, yeah, but, but I, I spent <laughs> the day running as a decoy. I did, I did catch one pass finally. Uh, they were throwing it to Jackie Smith on the other side, and, and or Randall one, and uh, I went down the field, and, and the guy came up and, and pushed me, and you know I threw my hands up to protect myself, and uh, uh, three or four steps later I came open, and, and he couldn't throw the other side, so he threw me the pass, and they called interference on me, and the ball wasn't even anywhere close to being thrown, but uh, I got an interference call. I did catch the pass, but I got an interference call on it. Who was the you know, toughest cornerback you had to face? Uh, Eric Barnes and uh, you know, he played for the Giants and a, and a Cleveland cornerback at the time. They were the two toughest. And we were playing against Cleveland uh, right day that I got shut out, so I guess he, he's the best quarter cornerback. with 73 receptions, did, did you think, okay, that's going to be about how many I'm going to catch on a regular basis now? No, I, I was I was satisfied with 60. But I thought I should call, catch, you know, from 60 to 65 in every year. 
Did you That's ever think to yourself, you know what, I I belong in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? <laughs> well, yes, sir. I did. I was the eighth, leading, eighth or ninth leading receiver when I retired, and I was never even mentioned. So, I, you know, it's, you think about it, but nowadays that's about 200 on the list. But it, it, it's become a different game where guys routine oh, will get, you know, get 89. Or something like that. No doubt about it. We, if we threw 25 passes, we'd, we'd throw a whole bunch of passes in a ball game. Now they may throw 25 in the first half, sometimes the first quarter. Yeah. So, you know, you can't compare. You brought up the name of one of your teammates who is in the Hall of Fame, Jackie Smith. And I, I just remembered he seemed impossible to tackle, but you'd have to push him out of bounds to stop the play most of the time, it seemed. Yeah, he was a big, rough, raw runner. He, he he was fast. He was faster than most people thought, and and he was hard to bring down because he just tough as a nail. And uh, he he gave it all he had. He was fair play too. Thank he was you. Wide receiver when he came to the Cardinals. When you when you were inducted into the uh, Texas Sports Hall of Fame in two thousand two. Yeah, yes, sir. How did you feel when you found out you were going in, in that Hall of Fame? Well, I was sort of surprised about that, too. But, you know, after it had been so long uh, since I'd played, but uh, I was, you know, it was satisfying as, as it could be. 